Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our little Blue Bear School of Music party and storytelling and just gathering as we lead into this wonderful season, the fundraising season. Uh, we're going to be raising money for Blue Bear School of Music in the coming months. And we wanted to bring the community together and learn a little bit more about the history of Blue Bear School of Music. So today you can expect uh, some great music, some great storytelling, and some wonderful company. So welcome, and thanks for joining. My name is Renee Richardson. I'm on the Board of Trustees for Blue Bear School of Music, and I am joined on founding member of Blue Bear School of Music, Richard Strauss. Wave, Richard. <laughs> Executive Director at Blue Bear School of Ma Music, Steve Savage. And friend former teacher, former student at Blue Bear, for, still a teacher, but former student at, former teacher at Blue Bear, and now current Blue Bear Board of Trustees, uh, Bonnie Hayes. Hi, Hi. Bonnie. <laughs> and finally, Melanie Mel Brooks, as we like to call her. She's our <laughs> development director at Blue Bear School of Music, and she'll be, she'll be doing the real nuts and bolts of this thing, but we're all here, and we're excited to be here, and we're gonna have a ton of fun together. And now we're going to start with a little um, welcome from Steve Savage, who you see on the screen. But this was something special he did for us. So let's check it out. Hello. Thank you for joining us for our Feed the Bear kickoff and the beginning of our 50th anniversary celebration. When the five of us opened the school almost 50 years ago, we had no idea what it would become. But boy, are we proud of what we have been able to accomplish. Over the last 50 years, we have helped over 40,000 students play and learn more music. And all those students have sent so much music out into the world. On a personal note, I'm incredibly grateful for having a life in music and for having that life completely intertwined with Blue Bear. So again today, as we have done so many times, we gather to celebrate the power of music and it as a force for good in the world. Thank you for partnering with us on this adventure. And what a wonderful journey it has been. Thank you, Steve. And now we're all here together again to talk, uh, talk about the origin of the school. And I thought it would be great to get um, each of your perspective on the humble beginnings of Blue Bear School of Music. And so Richard, we're gonna start with you. Uh, tell us, tell us your origin story, how the school began for you and, and you are the founding member of the school. So uh, we can't wait to hear your story. So uh, if you had told me that I would be telling this story at the 50th anniversary of Blue Bear, I, I, I would have said you're absolutely nuts. A uh, couple of reasons. First of all, how did I get this old? <laughs> and secondly, how did this improvisation that we put together, uh, making it up as we went along, how could that possibly have survived 50 years? So it all started uh, in April of uh, 1971. There you go. <laughs> Uh, we were living back to the land, four of us. There was my big brother, Steve, Linda, his wife, uh, Danny, our bass player, and me. I was 19. They were all like adults, 25, something like that. And um, we we were living back to the land um, uh, in a ranch, on a ranch in the Bear River Valley in the most remote part of the most remote part of the California coast, Humboldt County, just like four miles from Cape Mendocino. And uh, we'd been there for a year uh, putting the band together and it was time for us to hit the big time. And so we knew we'd go to San Francisco. We knew we'd be hugely famous. That wasn't even a question, uh, but we were broke and we had to do something between the time we got there and the time we got our first big record deal, which we figured was, you know, a couple of months, probably, maybe three. So uh, Steve had been teaching music lessons about a, an hour away 
for the, that whole year. And he said, well, uh, let's all teach music lessons. And uh, we all said, well, okay, if we have to, but it wasn't very uh, inspired. And then I said, okay, why don't we start a school? And then a light went off in my big brother's eye. And anybody who knows him knows that he is one of a world-class pitch man, one of the greatest salesmen I ever met. And he said, a college, a college of rock and roll. And the room just went completely silent. We all knew in an instant that that is exactly what we would do. And three months later, after Professor Savage joined us on drums and we rented the tiniest little um, space, retail space on Ocean Avenue, we opened our doors, Blue Bear Waltzes, definitely the world's very first school of rock. That is such a great, incredible story. And like you said, here you are 50 years later, <laughs> still doing it. How did the band do, by the way? <laughs> well, Steve can tell you, can answer that as well as I can. We, you know, actually we had a great manager who, you know, we thought we would be the airplane or the dead, but our manager managed Country Joe and The Joy of Cooking. And yeah, no, we, we were seri a serious band and, and it got a lot more interesting when we brought all of our best students, including Bonnie, uh, into the uh, Blue Bear Waltz's Electric Orchestra and Folk Chorus. And we, that, that was actually another completely crazy and absolutely original uh, thing. And there was certainly nothing like it. it. was I don't know how many people, Bonnie, were 30 altogether, 25? Because of the chorus. So you can always just pack right. as many people as necessary <laughs> to the chorus. Yeah, <laughs> most of them could, could you, you, you didn't have to sing, but most of them did. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's great. Um, now, Steve, Dr. Steve Savage, now the executive director of the school. Uh, let's, let's hear your story about Blue Bear and its origin for you and when you became involved. So my origin story is also back in 1971, I was playing in a band called Big Money and Electricity and we were mostly playing frat parties at Stanford. Um, and it turned out that the bass player in our band was friends with another Stanford student, and that was Richard Strauss. So when Steve and Richard were looking for a drummer for their band, Wolfgang and Strauss, Richard called me up and um, I was interested. Uh, he might have told me, oh, and we're also starting this school called Blue Bear Waltz School of Music, but that would have only been of small interest to me. I was really only interested in playing music and being in a band. So I joined the band um, and a few weeks later, we opened the school on Ocean Avenue. And it turned out that I really did like teaching drums. I had some great drum students in, including Bonnie's little brother when he was 12 years old, Kevin Hayes, who's <laughs> gone on to have a great, a great drumming career. Um, and and the school was really fascinating and amazing, lively place and all consuming. And we put together the orchestra with all the teachers, all the students who many of whom became teachers very quickly, including Bonnie. But, um, but the plan was, as Richard said, to break the band big and the school was just sort of a vehicle to get us by until that happened. And however, as it turned out, clearly here we are, uh, the school was a much better idea than the band. The band lasted about two and a half years and sort of blew up in a fiery crash as bands will do. Um, and the school has lived on and here we are 50 years later. Unbelievable. Unbelievable indeed. Now, Bonnie, uh, here you are with all these guys and you're, you're starting this music school and, and getting involved and just taking the world by storm. For those who don't know, Bonnie is a, a Grammy award-winning songwriter, an amazing teacher, and a, a wonderful musician. Um, but tell us about your start at Blue Bear. So I was a little younger, not much. I was 16. 
and uh, had just moved to San Francisco with um, my six brothers and sisters, many of whom ended up going to Blue Bear, and my newly divorced mom. And um, as any self-respecting adolescent does when moving, I created a new identity of a pot-smoking juvenile delinquent and went into the Golden Gate Park, which is where the other pot-smoking juvenile delinquents hung out. And I ran into a guy named Marcus Guerin, who was um, a guitar player. I had met him, you know, with a friend a couple of weeks before. And I was playing at being a musician. I mean, I had taken a lot of classical piano lessons. So I was like, yeah, man, like um, I, I'm a musician, but I can't find any cool people. You know, I haven't gotten my, I haven't been able to find any cool people. And Marcus said, hey, you should check out this new music school that just opened out on Ocean Avenue. So I went, you know, I went home to my mom and said, hey, mom, I, I want to take piano lessons. Now, in order to get the context here, I had taken classical lessons. And by the way, like I, th I spent at least a year pretending to go to piano lessons that my mom was paying for and not actually showing up. So I think I actually was a juvenile delinquent. <laughs> and so I, but she was like, okay, yeah, great. You know, we, I want my daughter. But, you know, the thing was, I, I couldn't really, I was a classical player. I had never learned how to put chord. I didn't know what chords were. Um, I had never improvised, I, but I loved music and I was really, really um, frustrated because I was, I was trying to figure out how to play this music and I couldn't even figure it out. So I go into Blue Bear to my, to my first piano lesson and I can't remember much about it except for that everybody in there, I mean, as Richard just said, everybody was like 25 or younger. And um, so they were like, I was like, these people are so cool. I have my lesson with 19 year old Richard Strauss, who is, sorry, kind of a babe. I think I remember you were wearing like a velvet jacket. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh my God, he looks like a rock star. So I, and Richard was my, you know, the teacher who taught me freaking chords and how to improvise, how to play a blues scale, which opened the door to the music that I had been trying to figure out. And, you know, I basically, for me, that was it. Like I was there as much as I could be there. I practiced all the time and I, I had, I became a musician and, um, you know, I basically fell in love with Blue Bear and I'll never fall out of love. Gave me and, my life, you know. Gave and me my Bonnie life. was the best student that I ever had. <laughs> because I was insane. Like she, I lost she, my mind. She was absolutely insane. Everything she's saying is right. <laughs> did become a teacher very quickly. After. Yeah. She could play eight hours straight. I literally practiced hours and hours wow. and hours. My brother, Chris, did the same thing. We, we both practiced all day. I mean, the, the guy next door would yell, please stop playing the piano because you can't, you couldn't turn them down in those days. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, it was, it was a true gift. Blue Bear changed, completely changed my life. Well, we should, we should take a moment now to um, check out a video clip. We have a clip, Bonnie, uh, of you at the Castro Street Fair um, a number of years ago. It feels like this would be a good place to share that performance. Can you can you tell us the song uh, that we're gonna play here and, and a little bit about that moment? Yeah, so the, I mean, the song is called Keeping the Hum Going. It's from my last record, Love in the Ruins. Um, you know, I said I was a juvenile delinquent. Um, I'm not juvenile anymore, but I'm still a delinquent. <laughs> this song is about that. I <laughs> hope you enjoy it. <laughs> wow. I think this is a song about sex and drugs. Uh, time I oh, somebody yelled. <laughs>
Oh my gosh, we're having so much fun hanging out together and reminiscing about the humble beginnings of our favorite music school, the original school of rock and roll, Blue Bear School of Music. And one thing that a lot of people don't know is that uh, Blue Bear is a nonprofit organization. It's a it's a nonprofit school, and that means we we look to our our friends and our neighbors to keep this this vibe alive. So. Melanie's going to tell us a little bit more about Feed the Bear season, which has officially begun. <laughs> and it always comes to me and it's like, dun, 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 here's the party pooper. <laughs> um, but this is, and I'm sure everybody knows this because you are hearing it from every single organization that you have ever enacted with, interacted with for even one second in your life. But it's end of year giving time and around here we call it feed the bear and what our feed the bear money goes towards is our nonprofit uh, outreach programs that we put on. So we're not just a music school where people come in and pay for music classes. We also bring music into all sorts of places in San Francisco. Um, churches, shelters, community centers, schools, and um, we believe that everybody's lives are enriched through music, and so we want to bring it to them as much as we possibly can. And um, so we don't normally do some big event to kick off Feed the Bear, but this year, because we miss everybody so much and want to hang out as much as we can and we miss Renee and wanted a chance to make her get on zoom with us um <laughs> and because we're about to um launch into our 50th anniversary celebrations and we just wanted to make this a joyous time we thought that um we would do this whole shebang tonight and talk with our friends about the beginnings of Blue Bear and then I have the really good job of asking you to help with the future of Blue Bear because as we all know, this year has sucked. No. <laughs> and while, while Blue Bear, the staff and the teachers, everybody's done this like incredible job of just changing how we do everything in order to stay afloat. Like I, everybody has impressed me. Every single person at Blue Bear has impressed me in some way with the amazing, you know, the great pivot of 2020 and how great everybody has done. Um, it's, it's still tough times. And we always rely on our Feed the Bear money to get us through, but this year more than ever. And so, you know, I know probably everybody watching this has been through something crazy this year. And I know you're probably being asked for a lot right now. And you're probably already doing a lot right now. You're probably already giving to a lot of places. But if you are able and if you are inspired, please bluebearmusic.com slash donate. We, every little bit helps and um, every little bit feeds the bear. And it's really easy to find the donate button. Just visit the website, bluebearmusic.org and look for the donate button and um, support your local music school. You know, you guys, I, as a, as a board member, um, I, I've been completely impressed with, pivot my favorite word of 2020 with <laughs> how you guys just changed everything and you were able to keep people employed and keep keep the teachers teaching and even engage new people in the idea of playing music I mean I know we're all doing this through a computer thing but boy oh boy with all the practice everybody's getting by the time they get back into a room and play together again we're gonna have some killer music coming our way <laughs> And it's thanks to people like Blue Bear School of Music and people like you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. We know how important music is. Couldn't be more important. So I studied at Blue Bear for a total of about two years. Um, and then I decided I wanted to learn, get a little bit deeper into studying music. And I started taking classes at at City College. And these were classically oriented classes. Um, and I would go into Blue Bear uh, to use the practice rooms. Um, and at a, this was at a time when Bonnie's um, performing career and her recordings were really starting to 
get some momentum. She was getting busier with that. And Steve was first her drummer in, in the original band, but then graduated to um, being the person who recorded their, their 45s and their album and also managing the band. And as things were picking up, Steve uh, felt like he needed to pull back from his daily involvement with Blue Bear. And they were basically looking for somebody to uh, fill that spot. Since I was coming in regularly to use the pianos, and since I'd already kind of gotten to know people for the prior two years, um, it sort of was like a light bulb went off with Carol at the time. Oh, what about Dennis? Um, <laughs> and it was a, a pretty easy shoe in from there. Um, I was a great candidate and uh, they, I was a known quantity, so they, and this was 1982 in the totally. spring. I'm thinking, were you asked in the job what your intentions were, how long you intended on staying? <laughs> What's your five-year plan or 40-year <clears throat> <40 -year> plan? <laughs> well, since in that 1982, at age 31, I still hadn't figured out what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, the Blue Bear job was like a gift from heaven. I was, I was ecstatic when I was offered this job. And I understand, you know, it was a part-time job. It was probably 15 hours a week. Um, but I, I felt like I'd hit the jackpot. I was just ecstatic. Hi, I'm Tom O'Connell, chair of the board of trustees for Blue Bear. I've been involved with the school for over five years now. Um, when I think back to when I first joined, it was with a fair amount of trepidation. Here was this group of people, very talented, skilled musicians, producers, teachers, all sorts of others from the industry. And I came in as the guy who was in the crowd. I was the fan who always loved the music but never participated in creating it. Um, what I found once I joined was this very welcoming group of people, all of whom had bonded over this love of music and uh, wanting to share it with others. Um, just a collaborative space, a positive environment full of fun loving people on the staff, on the board alike. Um, that became even more clear over the last year where like many nonprofit organizations, we had so many challenges headed our way. And it was just amazing to see the entire team rise up to meet them with kind of our characteristic resilience and positivity and a can-do attitude. It's made me even more excited about the years to come. And so hope you'll uh, join me in congratulating Blue Bear on how far we've come and what more there is to do in the coming next 50 years. Hello, everybody. I'm JT. And I'm Amanda. We love you, Blue Bear. And we want to just say hi and talk about a couple things. Um, what brought us to Blue Bear? About 10 years ago, I was teaching at a school in Portland, Oregon, and somebody, who to this day remains a mystery, came into Blue Bear, or came into the place I was teaching, and um, they said they were from Blue Bear, they were checking out the school, and I got to talking with them and said, you know, I'd love to live in San Francisco someday and teach at Blue Bear. A year later, Dennis got a hold of me, and um, it's been eight wonderful years of teaching at Blue Bear, and I hope to have many, many more. Why have we stayed, you ask? Well, <clears throat> it's together and both a little personal for me. Uh, the personal part of it is that as a female drummer, Blue Bear celebrated uh, me being a female drummer, which I've never had before. So as, a, as an instructor and as a musician myself, um, they really made me feel welcome uh, and, and celebrated the fact of who I was and wanted to give me more and give me opportunities because of that, which was wonderful. Um, why we've stayed is for the opportunity, the love of everybody. Um, our students are wonderful. Blue Bear is wonderful. And they really give us a creativity with classes. They really uh, add to um, our um, how much we're passionate about classes, and they really celebrate that opportunity. And we love to play music all day. Yeah. Uh, hi, so I'm Nicole Yarbrough and I am new to uh, the Blue Bear board and uh, very happy to be well invited and, and welcomed. Uh, I have worked with Blue Bear since 2018. I work with the YMCA Bayview and uh, I had a project 
and a community space, which is Hunter's View, uh, to create the recording studio. And so I tapped into my my friends at the branch, and because the because the studio at the branch is uh, currently run by Blue Bear and was uh, helped put together by Blue Bear. And so I was looking for who we could partner with. And they said, reach out to this uh, to this organization. And I did, and there came Cole. And so uh, Cole has been my main connection with Blue Bear. Uh, and we uh, created the studio, got donations, and then got some funding to get the rest of the stuff together. And uh, in six months, we created the Hunter's View Recording Studio uh, that we were using for, um, for classes. So people could learn how to uh, make music, learn how to play music. Uh, and we had many, many other plans uh, for, for the studio and we've gotten interrupted, but uh, I'm so happy to say that next week we're starting uh, an online, a 30 minute online program with our um, hub kids. So we've got a couple of kids that are uh, in our community space at Hunter's View and they're doing their online work and, and doing all their schoolwork and then we're providing some enrichment. And so uh, next week we're starting uh, a little class, a 30 minute music class for the kids. So I'm excited to get back in the swing of something uh, that makes us feel a little bit uh, normal. Um, and so, yeah, I just joined, joined the board. This is uh, what, month number two, maybe. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited to, to get into to what I can and how I can help out there. Um, I think it's a wonderful organization. I talk about it all the time. I live in Pacifica and I, I was just talking about it um, the other night uh, on another podcast. So uh, I, I, I just think it's such a beautiful mission and, um, and nonprofits, you know, they're just, they're just so good for communities, um, cause they're so driven to, to better the community. And so I just, I love supporting, uh, the work. I am not a musician per se, but you know, I sing in the shower and in the car and I have a little drum that I play, um, in my yoga class, I'm also a yoga teacher, um, which has, you know, changed uh, drastically this last few months. Um, so I, I'm excited because maybe I'll be able to get into uh, some more music, get a little bit musically uh, involved in that. So, so that's exciting too. Um, so yeah. Hello, Blue Bear community. Tennessee here. Some of you know me. Probably a lot of you. A lot of you don't. Uh, I've been around Blue Bear for about 15 years um, as a student and as a teacher. I first came to Blue Bear about 15 years ago. Uh, as a student, I was taking summer camps underneath uh, Bonnie Hayes and Susie Davis. Susie's my stepmom. And I stuck around. I just kept coming back summer after summer because I loved the community and the, the music that I was making and the ability to express myself like that. And eventually sort of started teaching and um, helping out with other different things, and finally now here I am, the Little Bears director. I stayed because of the community, I think, more than almost anything else. I just, I love the people here. I love the way that we can connect through music and not through music, and I really feel a lot of joy being able to bring the gift of music to other people because it's helped me so much in my life. This song that I'm gonna play is called Nuclear Spring. Uh, I wrote it, funnily enough, at a songwriting camp, a summer songwriting camp at Blue Bear about 14 years ago. One of my first experiences at Blue Bear, again, with Bonnie Hayes. Thanks, Bonnie! Uh, Bonnie Hayes was the lead teacher for that songwriting camp. And I have not changed a thing, so you guys get to hear it just as I wrote it 14 years ago. Now, without further ado.
gosh, we're having so much fun from seeing Bonnie and seeing some of the teachers play. And now we got the group back together because um, as a founding members of Blue Bear, Melanie and I thought it would be fun to just ask you some of the questions that we get asked all the time as board members and development directors of what the heck is Blue Bear all about? And the big question, and I'll, I'll ask you this one, Richard, is Blue Bear, Blue Bear waltzes what was the original title again and why? Okay, it was Blue Bear Waltzes. And this, the, the story goes back to the ranch we were living on. And our neighbor across this giant oat field was a man named Sid Morrison. He was 72 at the time. And he, the last time he had been in San Francisco was 1927. He, his father still lived on the land 
his next door neighbor. He was 96 and living in the house he had been born in. So these were original settlers of, of the Bear River. But Sid was this incredible autodidact. He was incredibly literate. He had a huge library. He, he was a, an arch conservative. He, he rifled his own bullets and he hunted his food. And um, Nyla, his wife, was the school teacher. And he could quote Milton and Shakespeare and was, a, you know, loved classical music. And so here we were, these hippies living, you know, a quarter of a mile from him on the best bottomland in the valley. And he opened his heart to us. I'm, I'm not sure exactly why. And so he found out our name was Strauss. And every time we saw him, thinking of the Blue Danube waltz, he asked, have you written any blue bear waltzes lately? Because of the Bear River. Bear That's River. The bear River, right. <laughs> so what we had no option but to name the uh, school Blue Bear Waltzes. And don't forget Wolfgang. The Wolf yeah. Dog. yeah, what was the Wolfgang yeah. reference? Where did that Wolfgang come? was um, was our dog, a German short hair pointer. And definitely when I told the origin story, I should have included a fifth person because he was so central to the school. And anybody from those days will remember him. In every picture that we ever took, he put himself right in the middle of the it. Middle. His ego was almost as large as my brother Steve. <laughs> this, this poster is from the early days, obviously, Blue Bear, when we were still Blue Bear Waltzers. And you can see Wolfgang and Strauss. This is uh, from one of our shows at Friends and Relations Hall with the Electric Orchestra and Folk Chorus. Um, yeah, and, uh, and some original dancing bears um, back in those yeah. days when well, we got to do this poster for uh, that actually went on the bus. Uh, we had a connection through the Strauss family to bus advertising, but our primary source of advertising back in those days was wheat pasting, That's and we would do oh, yeah. midnight raids in the city with posters and wheat paste because, of course, we really was illegal. Uh, and then putting up posters on lampposts all over the city. A skill we let, we used to great advantage for many years for our bands. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And very expert. At yeah. And how yeah. was how was the reception to you guys? Like seeing your wheat paste, and were you getting phone calls? And like, did did people start coming right away? Talk about that a little bit. Well, people did come. People definitely started coming, and and the school developed fairly quickly, but. We were in a little storefront and we were in a uh, sort of a, a corner of the school and it really wasn't until 1979, some years later, and the band had dissolved and a bunch of things had happened actually, but um, Carol Snow and I were running the school and I don't remember who told me, somebody told me about Fort Mason Center and um, I went out to visit and a bunch of fortuitous things happened where the people running Fort Mason Center, it had just opened, we were one of the very first uh, tenants there. And they said, a rock and roll school, great. And so, and they helped us raise the money to build it. And then as soon as we got in there, they got fired and a bunch of very conservative people came in. And, and for many years, we were like on pins and needles and we thought we were going to get thrown out at any moment. But that, but we survived. And then after a while, a new executive director came and he was taking lessons at Blue Bear. That's really when we grew. It was going to Fort Mason Center that made the huge difference for us. So and now we're over 800 students um, from 60. That's uh... the thing. The thing about the beginning is the energy that 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 was just uh, looking back on it. There were, I don't know, maybe 50 people all together. Um, but the energy was it was just it was, was really just electric every single day. I mean, that was what attracted me was I walked in there and everything. I mean, you don't understand, like. I was in, you know, this, we had moved, my parents got divorced. Everything was dark and dreary. And like, it was like, I was going to go to school and then have to go to college and like, I don't know, do psychology. I mean, it just felt very boring, you know? And uh, I went to Blueberry and I was like, oh my God, it's like the world is full of possibilities. And, you know, it just was so different. And I, I'm sure that happens to people young people all the time. And part of it was that there were a lot of young people who were just really energized and really excited 
and the city was really energizing and exciting, but Blue Bear was an amazing center, and even at the very beginning. Yeah. Um, music was, it, was, it was never boring there. Music was so important to the culture in those days, in a way, you know, since it's been eclipsed by video games and a million other things. But at that moment, music ruled the, the cultural world, especially for us uh, younger people as we were. It was the it was the currency that we used to to communicate with each other. I mean, you literally would meet somebody and go, "What? What? Who do you like?" Exactly. And <laughs> I think the thing about Blue Bear is that it gave people permission to be a part of it. Yeah. To you know, this was a great gift that my brother had, and I've mentioned him a number of times. Um, he gave me permission to be a musician, and you know, he you know, I said, "I'm not a musician." And he just looked at me and he said, you are whatever you say you are. Yeah. And that was the credo of the whole school. And I think that's maybe why it's still around 50 years I later. Say, that's still the credo of the school. And I was going to really say, even as uh, that is the, the key element to, to being around the, the people and, and everybody at Blue Bear, that's the vibe. It's like, yeah, you are whatever, whatever you say you are. Just right. try it and do it. Um, I, I real quick question because you guys created the original school of rock and roll. I mean, nobody was before you, nobody came before you. What was it like? Like, did you like how did you write programs for teaching programs and how you were gonna do this? Like who oh, did Renee. you do? <laughs> <laughs> No, there were no teaching programs. But there were, there were there were well there was a there was a, there was a vibe. It was the first time though, like, so I remember the band workshop starting up then. And so like, what would happen is you'd sign up and they, we'd, we'd put people into bands um, kind of by level. And we did a lot of like, we'd have the Beatles band, you know? And I mean, literally this was people who had never played in groups together before. Think about that, what that means to go in and have to like, listen to other people and play along and, cr and then, they do a show at the end. I mean, that was really original at that point. Yeah, that was later though. That 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 was a little bit after my time, I think. I, I mean, don't know. We, I, we were I, just starting it. Yeah, no, that's true. Well, a lot of bands early when I was still in high school, I believe. So it wasn't that. Maybe much later. yeah, maybe you're right. A lot of and there were a lot of bands that formed there. Um, so many. But it was an improvisation. I mean, it was so provisional. It's hard to really <laughs> describe. And we were there 14 hours a day. Absolutely. Yeah, we were paid. I think, I don't know, Stephen, you can verify this. I think we were paid $180 a month. Okay. I don't remember, yeah. but I do know we also gave ourselves an imaginary salary, if you remember. Yeah, that's we, right. When so we, we were... get big, then we'll repay ourselves. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's, a, that's very Steve. <laughs> yeah, Steve Strauss. Yes. yes, right. <laughs> oh, well, it's so yeah. great. And it's so great to hear from you guys. Anything else you want to share before we go on to our next little segment? I mean, uh, you should just know that Kevin is still a professional musician. Chris was a pro, you know, Kevin was in the Robert Cray band for 30 years. It was one of my brothers. Chris was in Huey Lewis in the news and retired with the zillion trillion dollars he made writing songs for that band. And I mean, that all happened. And my brother Jonathan is a musician in Los Angeles and has a studio. And so I just, that's all because of Blue Bear. And the arrival of the Hayes family into Blue Bear in that first year was a huge factor in terms yeah. of what we became and what we were able to do to have all of them um, as kids and before long as teachers and as musicians. So uh, Bonnie's, Bonnie's brother, Chris, was the best, mus best guitarist at the school at 13 years old. For sure. Stunning. Yeah. Musician. And yeah. And the only other thing I, I'll share is uh, the story about our press coverage, our early press coverage, which, I, um, which is just to say that um, the idea of a college of rock and roll caught some serious attention in, with national press. And, um, and as I've told the story before, my job was PR among other things. And so I got a call one day from this fledgling radio outfit called NPR, uh, <laughs> National Public Radio. And they were maybe six months old. 
And um, and I, I remember getting the call and th th there was this, the reporter's name was Susan Stanberg, who I'd never heard of before and is now, of course, a legend in all of that. And I remember sitting on the phone thinking, is this really worth my time? <laughs> and uh, so apparently, Stephen, you've tried to find it, uh, but it's not, they don't have an archive or something like that? or Well... We haven't been able to break through. We've tried. Maybe they do have it somewhere, but um, so far, yeah. I would love to get it, but we don't have it. But we do have the old articles from the Rolling Stone magazine and other places that we were written up in yeah. back then. So, yeah, it was. Uh, it's and, it's and wild. We were... Before we let you guys um, go and get back to the rest of the, the program, Mel, do you have any of the, the archival stuff? I And I too? just grabbed this when you were like, how did how, how did you start this? Where did you get curriculum? You know, whatever. And so I, um, because I'm gearing up for the uh, 50th anniversary, I have all this archival material actually sitting in my kitchen right now. And um, so I just pulled out this uh, 1973 oh, wow. catalog, um, which this, this is just a very fanciful story in here that uh, I, I won't get into, but this is <laughs> 1973 and it's, so you're two years in at this point and it's like um, uh, guitar department seminars, piano department seminars, uh, Snow Schwartz Memorial Lecture Clinic theory test biographies, like you all your stories are like we had no idea what we were doing and it was all in <laughs> but it seems like you were experts from day one well of course like zero surprise to me that we're sitting here 50 years later you know? well as as i said i was head of public relations so we <laughs> <laughs> and steve Str strauss was an incredible salesman he was he, he made everything look way better than it actually he was. he made tom sawyer look <laughs> look like a, a beginner. Yeah. Exactly. He, Steve, Steve would, Steve never did a lick of work at the school, but he, but, but he assigned work to Everybody. every single person there. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. You know, may he rest in peace. What a, what a guy. What a guy. What a nut. We can yeah. thank him. We can thank him. Yep. All right, you guys. Well, um, we're going to continue on and get to uh, another fun segment from one of the teachers at the school. And um, thank you for joining us. This is this is a super, super fun way to kick off Feed the Bear season. So thank you each and everyone for taking well, this. For thank you us. for having us. And thank you for everything, Mel, Renee, that you do for the school. Long live Blue oh. Bear. Long live Blue Bear. <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah. Really? Still alive. We got this far. It's a miracle. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Raz Kennedy, vocal coach, vocal producer, singer, and I'm here to celebrate Blue Bear, the Blue Bear School of Music. I've been a faculty member there ever since uh, 1981. And uh, since then, that place has been my sanctuary, my home, not only my home, not only my sanctuary, but for thousands and thousands of both teachers and music lovers. It's an incredible institution where you can study any instrument, study all styles, and with professional and well-skilled uh, instructors and mentors. So I want to introduce um, the song that I contributed to this effort. It's a tune I did at Fantasy uh, Studios before they closed. It's a shame that they had to go under, but at any rate, I did this live and in the studio. It was recorded at that time. It's uh, the Beatle classic written by John Lennon <laughs> called You've Got to Hide Your Love Away. Enjoy. Stand ahead and in Turn my face to the wall If she's gone I can't go on Feeling two foot small Everywhere people stay Each and every day I can't 
can hear them laugh at me and I hear them say hey you've got to hide your love away hey you've got to hide your I can never win Seeing them and hearing them In the state I'm in Oh, how could she say to me Love will find a way Gather on, oh, you smile Let me, let me let me hear you say Hey, you've got to hide your love away Yeah, you, you got to do that, brother Hey, you've got to hide your love away Hey, you got to hide You got to hide your love away Hide your love away What a fun trip down memory lane. Some of us weren't there nearly 50 years ago, but some of us were. And uh, thank you so much, Steve, for sharing your stories and putting this whole thing together. And Melanie for organizing everything and getting us all here on a Monday to enjoy each other's company and uh, learn a little bit more about Blue Bear. Um, thank, thank you, you, everybody, for joining us. That's all I have to say. Anything you want to say? Yeah, I just want to say thanks to you, Renee, who's been our hostess for everything for the past five years or so since you got involved and we're so grateful for that because you do such a great job and as I always say as long as Renee is there it's going to be fun <laughs> always fun when Renee is wholeheartedly there wholeheartedly agree you're never off the hook for emceeing <laughs> <That's right. laughs> all right close us out Melanie with the the how to donate because uh it's officially feed the bear season just one more time for the people in the back. <laughs> if you are able, if you are inspired, every little bit helps. We really, really mean it. One dollar to one million, if it happens to be burning a hole in your pocket. Bluebearmusic.org slash donate. And it's probably also, there's a link somewhere where you're looking right now or a donate button or it's in the chat. We'll, we'll make it easy for you. And if you are able, we thank you so, 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 so much. All right. Thank you, guys. And thank everybody. Thank you all for joining us. What fun. What fun indeed. Good night. Good, Good night. night.